Welcome to the daily race. We're not sprinting today. We're not running a marathon. We're just taking one step forward in our relationship with God. Uh, spending some time with him, uh, reflecting on his word that he's given us, and putting it into practice. Well, what do you want me to do today, Jesus? Um, we're in John chapter 21. We, we've got three more days, including today here in the book of John, and then we're going to be studying the book of Exodus. So we're going to go to the Old Testament, read the account of, of Exodus, and then we'll be, after that, we'll be back in the book of Acts. So kind of going back and forth here a little bit. Uh, very excited to do that. But today, we are uh, listening in on an incredible conversation that Jesus has with Peter. So uh, I mentioned before, Jesus' mission is done. He's defeated death, sin. He's taken all of humanity's sin on the cross. He's victorious. Uh, the story is, is, is over in that sense, yet there's still some, some conversations he's having with the disciples. And he's showed back up. They've gone fishing. They're back up in Galilee where this, this whole account with Jesus and the disciples started, where he first called them. But Peter has some unresolved issues. He has, he's betrayed Jesus, and they've never talked about it yet. Today they're going to talk about it. But let's, let's listen into that conversation. It says this, After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Now, more than these, more, more than what? <laughs> um, more than the other disciples? He could be referring to that. He doesn't say exactly. Uh, do you love me more than the other disciples? Um, it could be, remember what he, he counted there before? There's 153 fish. <laughs> Big old pile of fish there. Do you love me more than these? Which, he's not talking necessarily about you know, the actual fish, but do you love me more than your comfort? What you, you've done with your whole life, you know, being a fisherman. Do you, do you love me more than, than your profession, uh, your history? And the point is he's calling him, do you love me? Do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know that I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Less, yes, Lord, Peter said, you know that I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time, he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. All right, there's no mistake there. Three times. Three times he asks him that he loves him. Three times he replies in the affirmative, you know that I love you. A couple weeks before, three denials. Uh, he denied that he knew Jesus three times. This is the closure to that, that interaction. Jesus is, is coming to him. They're having this conversation. And what Jesus is doing is restoring him. There's some, we could go into all kinds of, of uh, language uh, in this passage, the, the way that he uses the word love, uh, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, all of that. We're going to stay at a little bit higher level here. The whole point that he's, he's bringing him back, he's restoring him. They're having an intentional conversation. Uh, he's able to express as many times as he showed, um, demonstrated, <laughs> not love for Jesus. I wouldn't say that, that Peter didn't love Jesus at, at any point, but he sure demonstrated the way what he said, denying that he knew Christ, sure didn't show love. So the fact that he didn't show Jesus love three times in his moment of, of deepest trouble, uh, most difficult time that he'd ever experienced, now Peter is reaffirming his love three times. Uh, there's some closure there. There's some restoration. Uh, he's... he's uh, coming to terms with this conversation. Then it says this, Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time, but he was hurt because not just the Jesus question, but he knew what this is about on the third time. Verse 18, I tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you're old, you'll stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you do not want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. So he lets Peter know in this moment. Tell you the truth. You've done what you've wanted to do. You, you, you felt like fishing. You, you came back here and you went back to your comfort zone. You came back fishing. But in the future, you're not going to give in to that. 
You're going to go places where you don't want to go. People are going to do things to you that you don't want them to do. But you're going to glorify me in this. Even your arms being outstretched, like on a cross. Uh, that type of death is going to go. You're going to give everything for me. You're going to give everything for my kingdom. And then he just says these very simple words. Um, then Jesus told him, follow me. Follow me. The same exact words that he told him at the very beginning. When he caught, when G Peter was fishing with his brother and his father. And Jesus says, drop your nets and follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. After all that time, after all those years with Jesus, after everything that he saw Jesus do, after his great triumphs, the Mount of Transfiguration, seeing Jesus uh, transfigured with Moses and Elijah to the, the lowest of depths, denying that he even knew Jesus. At the end of all of that, at the end of the, most, the greatest miracle he's ever seen, the resurrection of Jesus, the call was still the same. Follow me. Follow me. I think sometimes the longer we're a follower of Jesus, the longer we're a Christian, we think that the, the call from Jesus should get more complicated. That, that, that I'm mature now. I've been following Jesus for years and years and years. I'm growing spiritually. He must have some new assignment for me. He must have something deep and complicated for me to do. I need to search the depths of the scripture and really find out what that thing is. Because there's got to be something more. Or, or I, I've messed up so much, I, I, I probably need to start over. Like, I, There's a new starting point. I need to go to like remedial uh, training. But you know what? Whether you're a brand new follower of Jesus, a, a fallen follower of Jesus, or a lifelong follower of Jesus, guess what the call is? Follow me. Follow Jesus. He's central. He's, he's who we're learning from. When Jesus gives the Great Commission, you know what he tells the disciples to do? Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach these new disciples everything I have commanded them. He says, teach them Jesus. As followers of Jesus, you're following me and you're teaching others to follow me. That's it in a nutshell. And you know what? We don't like things that are so simple. We feel like things should get more complicated. If it's really important, if it's really spiritual, if it's really deep, we use that word all the, all the time, deep. I want the deep teaching. Follow me is what Jesus said. Now, doesn't mean that it's easy. Doesn't mean that it's, it's not difficult. Uh, something doesn't have to be complicated to be difficult. Things can be very simple and be challenging. Following Jesus every day of our life Becoming more and more like him in attitude, in behavior, in response to difficult things, that is a lifelong journey, a journey of transformation. Yeah, we, we have to learn some information here, learn what Jesus taught us to do, but the transformation, it's active, it's moving forward, it's following him each and every day. Now, part of this year, I'm preaching the choir because you're spending some time with Jesus today. Your intention today, when, when you open up God's word, when you listen to the daily races, okay, I'm going to take one step forward. And that is what he's asking us to do. He's asking you to do that with your first step. He's asking you to do that with your millionth step. Follow me. Well, what an encouraging passage here today. What a reminder. In the complexity of this difficult time in Peter's life, of this uh, betrayal, Jesus puts him right back on the same course he started at at the very beginning follow me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that you are going to show us the way. You didn't tell us to, to figure out the way. You didn't tell us to uh, study really hard and determine it for ourselves. You just said to follow you. And we thank you for each and every day how you've given us a next step forward. You've given us the Holy Spirit to lead us, to guide us. You've given us your word that, that is able to teach us everything that you have commanded us to do. God, may we approach every day as one step forward. May we approach every opportunity as an opportunity for following you, not, not following our feelings, not following what the majority of people are doing around us, uh, not following our, 
our, our heart, whatever thing, but following you. That's our desire. That's our prayer here today. And we know that that is the best possible use of our entire lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.